Hello there, my beautiful friend. If you're signing into this, I'm betting that you are, much like me, a bendy. Yeah, our joints go beyond a normal range and sometimes it's difficult to know where our bodies are in space. We've created a little two-part series for you where we're gonna be doing two different little classes. One, a little resistance-based class, just getting your technique right, being aware of where your body could go a little bit AWOL. We're here to help you with that. And then part two is gonna be yoga-inspired doing yoga, but with a slight twist. How can we utilize resisting against gravity to make sure our joints are getting strong at that end range where we need it most? So let's begin. We're gonna start this class with three different pieces of equipment. One is a small booty band. Okay, this is one that you're gonna loop around your thighs, get your glute need activation. That's that important hip stabilizer. Another little stretchy band where we're going to utilize squats and also shoulder stuff. And then one that's a little bit stronger, getting our hamstrings active. Now you can actually do this class being a bit creative with your resistance. One, you can grab some weights if you wanna do that. Two, you can also grab an old pair of yoga leggings and tie them up to create a booty band. Please don't feel like if you don't have the right equipment, you can't do this class. I'm gonna keep giving you ideas as we do this practice so that you're always supported. So remember, old yoga leggings, they can double up as a booty band, tie them around your thighs. And what we're going to do is we're gonna crab walk to infinity. You might be thinking this is so boring, I cannot do this, but I think we should just whack on a bit of Beyonce and we should <laughs> crab walk against the resistance of our booty band. P.S. We can make this more challenging as our strength increases by lowering the height of the booty band, going all the way as low as your ankles. And what I'd like you to do is ever so slightly turn your feet outwards and really feel that the top of your butt is where the push is coming from. Because ideally, we want the stabilizing muscle to be very, very active with every step you take beyond this practice. So that it's helping to maintain a healthy pelvic position. That means less strain happening on the knees and the lower back. Those stabilizers, we need them more than most people. But did you know the most important stabilizer in your body is your diaphragm? That's right, and a lot of people grip, get really tight here, making their diaphragmatic movement less. So put your hands on your belly and let your belly move. It's actually very safe to get the belly moving big and small with every breath, inhaling it expands, exhale it contracts. That means your diaphragm is moving to its fullest expression. And that's gonna give you more stability, okay? It's contrary to what we've been taught, that grippy cores are actually strong cores. That's not true. Is anyone else's butt burning? <laughs> Let's make this the last crab walk to infinity. And then just take a moment to be very proud of yourself for working on your butt with so much determination. I'm actually gonna keep you here just for a little moment. We're gonna work against this resistance as you go down and up into your squats. And then feeling, how does the band change the intention? A, around my knees, and B, around my feet. Do the inner arches stay lifted? Are the toes spread nice and wide? As you push against that resistance band, can you feel the energy in your body? Let's do two more. Last one. <laughs> well done. <sighs> okay, let's take this down to the ground, laying all the way onto your left side, supporting your head with your left hand, and then using your right hand to check that the hips are stacked. Now you can maintain the position of the booty band or you can lift or lower it, just depending on wherever it's comfortable for you. But let's go for 10 clams against resistance. Here we are still working gluteus medius, but we're just giving it a slightly different angle for activation, reminding it how important it is to us. <laughs> and in this position, it's also a really nice place where you can have a little look down at your belly, check that your belly is moving with your diaphragm. One more, stay up there. Okay, now you've got options. You can either get rid of the booty band, you're gonna come up onto the forearm, and we're gonna do what I call clams on crack because we're gonna go all the way up with the pelvis, opening through the knees and down. We're going for another nine, let's do this. Nine, eight, seven, 
Wow. <laughs> oh, they always surprise me how intense they are. So starting all the way now on the other side, line your right, left hand checks that your pelvis is stacked. You can have a little feel if your belly is moving alongside your diaphragm, that there's no rigidity there. We're halfway. Feel the power of the muscle with your hand. Be impressed. Last one. Now let's pop up onto our right forearm. Here we're going to do our clams on crack. You're lifting all the way from the ground, opening through the knees and then lowering down. And you really want to feel as if the pelvis is being pulled forwards before it comes back down. Six, seven, eight, nine, good job, and 10. I'm so proud of you for doing that because I'm feeling your pain right now. It is not easy. People see females particularly doing workouts with these and they think, oh, and they have no clue just how good it is for them. Next, we're gonna grab hold of our thicker stretchy band. If you don't have one of these, grab a backpack, fill it with books, and that's gonna provide a really great little resistance that you can utilize for your deadlifts. Now, the reason I love teaching my bendy family deadlifts is because they often very good at yoga, they often do a lot of yoga, and so the back portion of their body actually becomes quite weak from all the excessive forward folds. What this is gonna provide is a little bit of resistance. Now notice, I'll turn sideways so you guys can see me, I'm going to hinge from my hips, maintaining a long spine, and then I'm driving forward from my pelvis to get full extension back up into standing. We're going to repeat that a few times, and what I'm going to encourage you to do is really take a moment at the top, because this is posture. How are you able to sustain your posture against something wanting to pull you down into your default. Can you stack your rib cage over your pelvis? Can you smooth out a nice big breath? And then can you continue with the exercise? And yes, there might be little moments where you have a little shaky butt. Remember that's your brain's map, that's a tiny bit fuzzy. By doing this movement over and over, you're gonna smooth out those maps and you're gonna really help to encourage your body to feel stronger in every portion of this movement. So when you're lifting things, when you're lifting your kids or you're shopping, when you're moving house, lifting the sofa, you're gonna be able to sustain your really strong position in your body as you move. Feels good, huh? <laughs> How's your booty? <laughs> yeah, the booty should be working here, so if it isn't, put your mind in that muscle and really engage it, especially at the top. Good work. Four more. Now at the very top, after we've done the final one, I want you to maintain it there. And actually what we're gonna do is work a little bit on the shoulders. We're gonna let the shoulders flop, and then we're going to engage the shoulders. Let them flop and then engage. It'll feel like the whole upper back is moving, but you'll also feel like the head of the humerus, the top of your arm bone, is being pulled out of its socket and then being pushed back in. So be very gentle with this. If you feel that the stretchy band is too powerful, grab a thinner one, or allow yourself to make the movement smaller, or I've created more slack by bringing my feet together. But the idea is that we're not letting the stretchy band pull our arm to the ground, but instead we're using all the shoulder muscles like a cuff that wraps around the top of the arm bone to draw that arm bone back into its socket. Two more. Good job, last one. Nicely done. Step carefully out of your band, placing it down on the ground. Grab your thinner band now, and we're gonna go back to the squats we were practicing before, but this time with a bit of shoulder elevation. So you're gonna step inside, bring the band all the way up to your chest, press it up overhead, and then you're going to bend, come into your squats, and extend it. In your fully extended position, you're gonna lower to your chest and extend overhead. Now, remember how it felt to do your squats with a booty band wrapped around your knees? The inner arches of the feet were lifted, the knees were driving wide. Just replicate that again. 
Remember how it felt when the stretchy band was trying to pull your shoulder out of its socket? Here it's reverse, right? So you've got to really press up into the sockets. Yeah, exactly. You, want, you don't want gravity to win, you be down here. You want to resist against gravity, against the stretchy band. Good. Let's bring it all the way down. And on the way up, really show it to who's boss. <laughs> Amazing. Down and up. Bring it to your chest. Show it who's boss. <laughs> One more. You did so, so, so good. All the way down and all the way up. Nicely done. Now, control coming out of this. Be careful, stretchy bands can be a little bit brutal. We're gonna do one more thing where you're gonna take a step onto the stretchy band and the other leg is gonna go back and you're gonna use your back muscles to draw the shoulder blades together as the hands shave past your waist. And you're just working those muscles that help to activate across your back to keep your shoulder blade in a great position throughout the day. It's also gonna be a nice chance for you to get your head in a good position. So think of giving yourself a little double chin. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but trust me, we're doing a lot of good stuff for your back body right now. Now I've totally lost count. <laughs> if you're counting, thank you. <laughs> Let's hope, hope we're gonna do the same number on the other side. Otherwise make sure to adapt it to help me and my crappy counting out. Right, here we go. Already feeling the little pieces of the body clicking into place. And maybe noticing one shoulder, maybe not as connected as the other. This is where putting your mind into that joint, into that muscle can be really helpful. Also imagining like you're lifting something heavier on that side so that the body has no choice but to activate more powerfully. I'm gonna imagine that this is our equal numbers now. I'm sorry for being so bad at counting. I'm gonna work on that. <laughs> How are we feeling? Do me a favor. As a bendy, your posture is your best guide as to how connected your tissues are. So as you're standing, do you feel like you can lift up against gravity a little more easily? And are you able to relax your belly with your breath? Does it expand on the inhale and does it contract on the exhale without any rigidity, tension or shakiness? This is gonna be a great marker for you to know and understand if what you're doing is actually helping to support your bendy frame. Now, I, as you know, I'm a very hypermobile, very bendy person. I actually wrote a book about it called Too Flexible to Feel Good. Definitely check that out if you're a hypermobile person and make sure to tune into the next video. Next video, we're gonna use yoga to inspire our movements. We're gonna be making sure that we resist against gravity to get the most out of that practice. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and let us know in the comments how this class felt in your body. Till next time.